Hey everybody! In this video I'm going to be talking about doing a watercolor study with a limited palette. So I'm just going to use two colors. I'm going to really limit it so I'm using French Ultramarine um, and Burnt Umber. And honestly uh, when I'm working with watercolor this combination of colors is probably my favorite. I actually don't like to use black at all. Um, when I'm painting, um, or at least not often, and I prefer to use a mixture of these two colors um, instead because it creates this really nice dark almost black gray and it's it's got a lot more depth to it than um, just your standard traditional black does. Um, it's, it's a little more voluminous, it's got some interesting granulation and everything. So um, I just sketched out this really simple uh, spray bottle, nothing fancy here. And what I am going to do is just mix these two colors to create kind of a fleshed out study. So um, what I'm going to do first is give myself a background to everything. I usually like to start by doing loose washes um, throughout the whole image and then I start tightening it up as I go along. So I'm just going to decide to myself what I want to do with my background. Um, so I think I will get started with kind of a wet on wet wash. So with my brush, you know, clean or close enough to clean, I'm just going to kind of follow the edges of my spray bottle here with my brush just to make sure that I've got a nice crisp edge. Um, so one thing that I think is really interesting with watercolor is, um, well actually just painting and honestly drawing too uh, in general is so much of it is about kind of the interplay between light and shadow. So instead of thinking about you know outlines or edges we're really thinking more about the the edges that are created between a highlight and a shadow um, and that's really what's going to create definition in your artwork so um, that's something that you learn kind of the more you start painting and the more you develop your your work so i'm just going to start with kind of a medium wash for a background um, I can always go in and darken it if I want, but um, I don't want to have, you know, too similar of values to the spray bottle itself. I want to have some nice contrast there, but the bottle itself is mostly white and light values anyway, so I think I can get by with some darker washes. Um, one thing that I want to do is when I'm down here, this is mostly in shadow in this space. So I think I might go with a lighter wash in this area just to kind of help push off the contrast just a little bit. What's nice about doing the wet on wet style of wash is it allows us to kind of avoid brush strokes. It gives you kind of a softer, flatter color and you can kind of create a softer gradients of value as well. When I am doing uh, watercolor studies and sometimes even my more developed watercolor work I do like to have a bit of my pencil underdrawing showing. I just like the uh, kind of the aesthetic of having those sort of more gestural marks shining through. I think it gives it a little more character. However, you know, if you are aiming for hyper-realism or uh, wanting to have more precise detail with the paint, you can just as easily uh, lighten up your pencil work so that it's a really, really fine, delicate drawing that doesn't really shine through once you've layered your watercolor paint. So I'm just going to let this wash kind of fade as we move downwards. Um, 
I think I'm going to do kind of a similar thing over here. Just kind of lighten it up just a little bit more. All right, at this stage, I'm going to just kind of block in some lighter values throughout the spray bottle. Um, I'm going to keep it very loose. I'm not aiming for detail yet at this point. I'm just kind of figuring out placement of where my values belong. I'm going to stick with my flat brush because I feel like that helps keep me looser. Once I switch to round, I feel like I always want to uh, get more detailed inadvertently. Like I don't really try to, but it just kind of happens. So I'm just going to stick with my flat brush and kind of block in my values. And then some of the areas, um, you know, I wanted to have still some areas of bright white in them. So I'm just going to like let my paint fade out by diluting it. I'm careful not to touch the edges of the background because obviously if we mix wet paint into wet paint, then we get a gradient of uh, things or sometimes if it's starting to dry we start to get things called back runs um, which when done purposefully can be really nice um, however if you're not intending for that to happen you might get a little frustrated and when I'm working with my watercolor I really like to build everything up kind of layer by layer um, I don't like to just dive in and do, you know, super dark values immediately. I like to kind of slowly build it up because um, I feel like it's much easier to get darker with your values. It's not as easy to get lighter, especially with watercolor, um, because this, the, the key sort of tenant of watercolor is that we use the white of the paper as our white values. So that can be kind of a fun challenge to have as we are working. So how do we use that negative space? How do we keep the white of the paper showing strategically? And you may have noticed I have not incorporated any of the burnt umber yet. Um, that's just a personal preference. I feel like I'd like to establish my base values first and then I'm going to start mixing my colors to create a little more variation. As I get into this kind of ribbed section, um, there's kind of a delicate play between these like larger flat areas of value and then the kind of subtle volume that's created in the highlights. So I'm going to just gently kind of block some of those in. I'm not aiming too much for detail yet at this point. And this feels a little static to me. So what I think I'm going to do is just kind of add a tish of water to fade it out and kind of give it a more organic feel. All right, from here, I have kind of my base, like medium and lighter values established. And now I just need to kind of let it dry. Um, if I were to keep working right now, it would start to bleed and that would really start to give me some stuff that I'm not looking for at this stage of the game. Um, so a few things to note while we're waiting for things to dry is, um, first of all, you may notice my paper is stapled all the way around. So if you're unfamiliar or if you're new to watercolor, um, what I've done is I've stretched my paper. So this kind of helps alleviate some of the buckling that happens when your watercolor paper gets wet, especially if it's uh, a, a lighter watercolor paper. It's not um, quite as heavy duty as, as some might be. So this is just kind of student grade practice watercolor paper. Um, so I have this foam board right here. It's called Gator Board. Um, and it'll, it's kind of has a waterproof coating on it. So I'm, a, I'm able to staple my paper into it to stretch it. 
Um, and when I stretch it, I just soak it in some water and that kind of helps get rid of some of the sizing that is present in the paper. And when it dries, it then shrinks and that allows the paper to um, kind of stay a little tighter and less likely to ripple or buckle when it gets wet. Um, you can use tape as well uh, if you don't like having holes all over your stuff. Uh, but there's a lot of different ways to do it and you can watch that in another video of mine. All right, now that this first layer is relatively dry, I'm just going to start going in and getting some slightly darker values. I'm just gonna make a slightly more saturated ultramarine wash to work with. So right now I'm just kind of using my water as a lifting agent to kind of lighten up an area that I got a little too dark too fast. So um, just took some clean water and incorporated it into the existing wash and then um, I've just been drying off my brush on my paper towel to kind of clear out some of those areas. Um, you can do the same thing to kind of soften your edges while they're still wet. So as I'm building up these values, I'm really just thinking about sort of the play of light on the object. So I'm not thinking about color necessarily at this point. I'm just thinking about what is light, what is dark, and kind of how do those edges interact with one another. Um, so, you know, which, which edge is going to be the brighter a uh, more defined edge, um, and is it defi defined by light or is it defined by shadow? Uh, so those are all things to kind of spend some time observing. So especially when I'm looking at this area here, um, I'm noticing right at this edge, the darker spot is defined on the curve here, whereas up here, the darker edge is the flat face of the sprayer. So sometimes they kind of change and, and morph as we move around the form, just depending on the shape of the form. And then we can make those adjustments with the values as we go along. I think the main thing is I don't want this front face to be too dark because it's really still a rather light value, but it has crisper edges. So I'm gonna kind of play around with light and medium values in that space. The underside of this is much darker, so I can feel pretty comfortable adding in some stronger values in that space. And I notice as I go, I hit kind of this wet edge right here, creating this back run into the smaller space. But I actually kind of like that um, because there is a shadow there anyway. Um, so I think it's kind of a more natural way of creating a shadow. So from here, I'm just going to soften up these edges. I just cleaned off my brush. So having that clean water on there is going to help me create this nice little gradient value. I'm going to do the same kind of everywhere else that I had those edges. And I do want to soften this background just a little bit. It was getting a little out of hand. <laughs> there we go. That's better. All right. So I'm just going to keep going in and adding those darker values throughout. It kind of feels like at this point, like I'm almost creating outlines, but I'm not doing that. I'm actually just kind of looking at where I see shadows um, created on the edges of the objects. So I'm not outlining it. I'm creating edges with shadows. So uh, if that's kind of a new concept, it might be a little bit confusing, but the more you look at objects as you're creating them, the more you do it, the more it's going to make sense. 
as I create this really light wash here, I'm still cognizant of creating this sort of like white edge uh, where there's kind of like a harder highlight along here. Um, so that's something I want to keep an eye on. So as I'm creating these sort of uh, ribbed edges, I'm just using the flat edge of my brush and I actually really like that as opposed to just drawing a line across because it gives me these sort of like variations in the line quality um, which gives it sort of a more natural feel to it which I appreciate. All right, I'm starting to feel good about the buildup of values in the image so far. So um, what I think I'm probably going to end up doing now is after this layer dries, I'm going to start going in with more of the burnt umber to start creating a little more tonal variation um, and kind of create a little more crispness. So, I mean, I could actually stop and just have a monochromatic study right here if I really wanted to. Um, but I just want to push it a little bit further, kind of play with it and see what we can do. Now that my second layer is dry, I'm going to start making some mixtures with the burnt umber. So like I mentioned earlier, mixing the ultramarine with the burnt umber is going to give you this really nice gray. And obviously like once it's half and half, it's pretty, pretty neutralized. So I'm just going to slowly start adding the burnt umber into it. And then I'm going to just kind of look at my image and sort of decide which areas need more of that neutralized color and which areas are going to benefit from uh, keeping the blue. I think more up towards the top, I feel like it's the shadows are a little bit warmer, a little more brown. So I think I'm going to start with the neutralized color and then I'm going to push it even further into the warm of the burnt umber. So as you can see, it's kind of really neutralizing the blue that is there currently. Just kind of lifting up some of the areas of value just a little bit. I think when I <clears throat> started working with watercolor, um, something that I really struggled with was value. I feel like all of my colors were really washed out and like super light. Um, but then again, I think I also struggled with that in my drawings. So <laughs> maybe it was just an across the board event. But um, I really struggled with, yeah, getting those darker values. I think I was kind of afraid to like go too far and that it would look bad. Uh, so one thing that I really like to do to kind of help my help me make sure that my values are strong and that I have like a good range of value throughout is to frequently take a step back from my work and look at it from a distance um, because that's something that I wasn't really doing a lot when I was younger and it made such a huge impact on my work once I learned to start doing it. Um, because when you take a step back, you're able to kind of unfocus your eyes a little bit and just see those kind of shapes of value, those just uh, areas of light and dark instead of details. Because um, I definitely, just as a person, am a very detail-oriented person. Uh, you know, I've been told by a number of teachers that I have a hard time seeing the forest through the trees. Uh, which is valid criticism because yes, I definitely struggle with that. So by taking a step back, it allows you to see that forest, right? It allows you to kind of see which areas are light and which areas are dark and, and focus less on the details that are showing. Um, and it's really valuable. So I always step back probably like six to 10 feet and I feel like that's pretty sufficient for deciding whether your values are good or not. So very helpful. And at this point, I'm really just kind of building up my areas of value throughout the image. And I'm going to start kind of incorporating more and more brown 
into my washes um, to kind of warm up some areas. So now I'm not just looking at the lightness or darkness of an area, I'm also looking at the warmth or the coolness of an area. So from here we just really start to kind of get a little more specific about what it is we are looking at and how that would translate into this sort of two color palette. So what is warm? What is cool? And can I make any adjustments as I go along to kind of meet those needs? So I'm noticing still a little more blue towards the bottom here. So I added a little bit more blue into my brush. It's not quite so brown anymore. I'm getting that kind of transition from one color to the other is actually pretty nice. And that's working out pretty well here. One thing I like to do when I am incorporating the other values in here and other colors as I start to warm things up is um, you may have noticed I've been putting like a, a line of color down and then taking just water with my brush and diluting it as I go down. Um, that's one way for me to kind of create a softer gradation of color and value across the across the form. It's really just kind of a helpful way of blending. So I'm starting to go in more with just the um, burnt umber and um, I'm kind of glazing the color over the top of the blues that I already have, which in turn does create some of that neutralized gray that is created when you mix the colors, but um, I feel like glazing the color, so like laying a wash over the top of the other color, um, creates a really nice sort of like translucency to it, which I really appreciate. And I feel like as I go down further here, I don't want to put too much of the burnt umber in this area because I feel like this is a lot cooler compared to sort of the warmth throughout the spray bottle itself. So I'm just going to keep focusing that brown in on the spray bottle. And something that I'm really enjoying right now is kind of seeing how the blue bleeds into the burnt umber here. So I think I want to do that in a few other locations just to kind of balance it out and be a little more consistent with that. So I have a few things left to do, I think, to kind of wrap this up. And that would be to just refine some of the darker values here and details. And then I feel like this background needs to get warmer. So I'm probably going to do a wash of brown over the top. But what I'm going to work on right now is just uh, getting some of those dark shadows emphasized a little bit more in some of these areas. One thing that you'll find with these two pigments in particular um, is that they are not really very staining, meaning I can lift them off of the paper if I make a mistake. Um, so this can be really positive for certain instances, like it's really easy to make adjustments if you put something in that you don't like and you want to make some changes. However, because the colors lift up really easily, they also have a tendency to lift when you don't want them to, um, which can be kind of a struggle to work with. So I'm noticing like in this area in particular that I'm working on, um, the colors are tending, like the darker values are tending to lift up when I add more layers on top of it. And um, what tends to happen is when you kind of overwork an area or you spend a little too much time on it or you know lay just a little too much paint down it wants to lift up so I can kind of counteract that by using a little less water and just making sure my paint is a little more uh, saturated 
and that usually tends to do the trick. But if I were to go over this with a wash again, it's going to want to lift up again, and that's going to just keep causing problems in these same areas if I don't kind of pay attention to that. So it's at this stage of the game that I'm really starting to dry brush. I'm using less and less water to achieve the darker values and to kind of get more detail as I'm working. This is kind of standard practice for how I work personally. So as you can see, this area is kind of lifting too. So I need to make sure I have just the perfect mixture perfect amount of water so that I have enough pigment to cover but it also doesn't like scrape the paint right off the page. It's at this stage of the game where it gets really easy to overwork your image. So it's kind of hard to know like when should I stop? Where should I keep pushing it? I feel like I'm getting really close to a point where I want to quit before I do too much. And I feel like that's usually where I want to step back and look at my image from a distance, really check to make sure that I have the contrast and details that I need to finish this off strongly. So I'm sure some people are wondering, you know, Hopper, why are you painting a spray bottle? <laughs> like, that's pretty random. Uh, you know, I think one of the best things about art is that we learn how to see the beauty in really mundane things. So I think that's like the best part about being an artist is I can take anything and, and find something beautiful in it or find something at least visually interesting, you know? Um, and, and I think that is what makes art so awesome is we can really turn anything into something worth looking at. Uh, and so that's why I chose this really boring spray bottle, is I wanted to turn it into a thing of beauty. Something very simple and inelegant, so to speak. Yeah, so I'm feeling a lot better now that I'm warming up this background. I feel like my edges are kind of coming alive just a little bit more. And I'm going to just play a little bit with where the brown kind of tapers off and where it's a little more intense. I think that's a lovely, lovely glaze to have over things. So I'm choosing to do uh, wet on dry wash now um, because I feel like I feel like I want to keep some of those harder edges and then just play around with loosening it up with water. It's going to give me kind of a more painterly feel to my artwork. And this is really all just something you learn by doing. Like, how do I know what brush strokes are gonna look good where. I mean, half the time I still don't really know the answer to that. <laughs> I just learn by doing it and say, oh, that works. That doesn't work. Keep doing that. Don't do that. And that's really what pushes me forward as an artist is to just experiment and make mistakes. Sometimes as the great Bob Ross says, happy accidents, happy little accidents. <laughs> um, you know, that's what art's all about. All right, so there you have it. Probably about an hour and a half worth of work. Working with a limited palette of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. Thanks for watching and keep creating.